Welcome back. Welcome back. Glad to see all of you after a busy, busy weekend in Ole Miss sports. Appreciate you guys being here. My name is Michael Borky. I uh, am sad that we missed our regular live chat on Sunday. I was out of town. I am clearly back in town, and so is the live stream. Appreciate you guys being here. Please like the video, subscribe if you have not already, uh, and leave a comment as well if you're watching after the fact. I appreciate you guys uh, still commenting. I read them, I see them, and uh, glad that you guys are here. So three things on the lead today. Chris Beard returning to Ole Miss. I know that's a bit of old news, and so, look, I already posted a video about this that you guys uh, hopefully have watched already. If not, you can check that out. Uh, Also, for those of you podcast listeners, did a podcast about it, so you can check that out. But uh, I want your reaction. Since I didn't do either of those things with a live chat, I want to hear what you guys think about how all of that went down. So please give me your thoughts on that. The Grove Bowl, as we know it, is gone forever. A lot of people are excited about what's happening this weekend. I think that um, it has a chance to be great. uh, But I don't like that it's going away. And I'll explain why. And finally, baseball gets swept again. They get swept again. And I think, quite frankly, some of the reaction to the series, um, some of it, kind of the minority reaction to the series, uh, is a mentality that needs to go away. So we'll talk about all that right here on this edition of the Rebel Report. Again, my name is Michael Borky. Follow me, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Michael Borky, B-O-R-K-E-Y. And wherever you get your podcasts, if you're listening on the website, I know a good bit of you do, pull out your favorite podcast app on your phone. I recommend Spotify, but any of them will work. Search Rebel Report, subscribe, and leave a rating and a review. So, again, like I mentioned before, I I want to invite you uh, to give your thoughts on Chris Beard, Arkansas, that situation, since I've already given uh, a lot of them. So I will skip over that, and we can get to that in the uh, the live chat. So what do you think about it, the whole ordeal with Arkansas, turning Arkansas down, them turning over to – Uh, Jerome Tang and and him turning them down as well. And then they end up with Calipari. And, you know, I read a lot of stuff about that on the drive back here uh, today. And, you know, some of it I thought was really interesting that uh, the breakup was good for both sides. And, you know, when it was laid out the way it was, uh, I agree. I just I'm not totally sure that if I was Arkansas that I would want to hitch my wagon to somebody that was underachieving with the best recruits in the nation. I just, I'm not totally sure that that is something that I would be super excited about. They are using, oh my gosh, look at all this NIL money we have as some kind of, well, now he's going to recruit well. I don't know. It feels very Jimbo Fisher-esque to me. It felt like a desperation move uh, from Arkansas after getting very publicly turned down by at least a couple of candidates. So would love to hear uh, what you guys think about that. Number two, the Grove Bowl, as we know it, is gone. Lane Kiffin in his press conference today talked about the fact that Joey Chestnut is going to be there as a result of Lane Kiffin sending him a direct message. A video came out over the weekend where they were, he and Jackson Dart and J.J. Pegues, the captains of the two teams and whatever they're doing now, uh, we're talking about getting students involved. They're going to have some kind of competition with the, all, all the Greek houses, both the fraternities and the sororities. Uh, there, there's been a lot of talk about seven on seven and individual competitions and stuff like that. So it's not a it's not a spring game uh, anymore. And, and a lot of programs are, are going away from that for a lot of reasons. One, you've got the injury component. Ole Miss um, suffered that a year ago to, to a degree. And so that is a problem, and especially in this era where players can just up and leave whenever the hell they want to, coaches are more reluctant to give a here's who is the ones and the twos and the threes and the fours because they could possibly lose players. I understand why Ole Miss is doing this, and if they do it correctly, if they do it right, it could end up being a really good and fun thing if they do it right. The Pro Bowl in the NFL went away from doing an actual game the, the game was becoming a joke. Fans were kind of checking out, although it's the NFL. Everything they do is still watched by the masses, regardless of what they do. It just is. I mean, the Pro Bowl was losing ratings like crazy, and it's still outrated like 99% of college football games, right? Like, it's it was still watched. But 
what they're doing now is actually pretty fun. Is it a game? No, but it, it's it's something, and, and I actually kind of enjoy watching it. It's a little goofy, but it, it is fun. So I'm curious to see what it will look like. I'm not going to judge something uh, until I see it. The idea sounds good. It, it makes sense. The, the one thing that's saving the concept for me is the fact that they are bringing back the meet the players fan event. If you are a Grove Collective member, which starts at $21 a month, which, you know, it's money, right? Um, so I, I talk about how the fans are getting microtransaction priced out of the sport. So it's still, you know, you have to be some level of giver to either the collective or the um, the the athletic department's club. So if you don't like the concept of NIL and you still give a little bit of money to the athletic department, you have access to uh, and meet the players day. I assume uh, kids will get in free as long as they're with a parent that does one of those two things because they should. Kids uh, are not obviously donating uh, discretionary income that they don't have to collectives. Um, that is something that I think is so important that they are bringing back. And, and I am glad to see that because the fans, when you are constantly being bombarded with give more, give more, give more, seeing you get something tangible out of that investment is something that I talk about a lot. And I'm glad that that's coming back. I'm glad that if you are one of those people that that gives to either the athletic department or the collective, that you can bring little Johnny to the spring game and little Johnny can go meet Jackson Dart. That is a really cool thing. It needed to come back. Uh, player access for fans needs to increase, even if it's not at a practice or at a scrimmage or at a real game. The fact that my neighbor down the street can take his 12-year-old up to the spring game and he gets to go meet Jackson Dart and he gets to go meet Jared Ivey and he gets to go meet... Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. Somebody's upset. Hold on. I think his sound machine cut off. I'll be right back. That is exactly what happened. Forgive me. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, when the sound machine cuts off, uh, that is uh, that that becomes a big problem. So, forgive me. Anyway, where was I? Um, long story short, the fact that my neighbor down the street can bring his twelve-year-old son up to the uh, up to the spring game, and they can see what, what whatever it is the seven on seven, the whatever it is. But then he gets to go meet his his favorite players. And, and that's how you establish that lifelong connection between fan and player and program. That's how you do it. You do it by meeting players. Uh, I fell in love with the game of football, not, not just going to games, but I mean, I've got that, that poster right up on the wall. And it's still one of the, the best days I've ever had in my life when Furman beat Western Kentucky in the playoffs and they let the fans on the field after the game. And I got to meet and got that program signed by Lewis Ivory and Will Bouton, the running back and the linebacker, my favorite players. And that, I mean, I still think about that to this day. So this weekend, young Ole Miss fans are going to have that experience. And that experience had been taken away for a while. And I'm glad to see 
that it is coming back. I think that those things should be accessible for everybody, but I understand why uh, they're doing it this way. And so I, I'm, I'm glad to see that happening. I appreciate that they are bringing that back. That's what needs to be. Um, that's what needs to, to happen. Uh, so that is a big selling point for somebody like me in the positions that I have to, you know, be on board with the change like this. However, I do, quite frankly, um, and now the tornado sirens are going off, but I didn't think we were getting that kind of weather. Either way, um, I am very, very um, disappointed that spring football is going away. So take Neil McCready, for example, somebody who, whose work I really like and, and I respect uh, the, the job that, that he and, and Chase have done and, and what they've built, and, and I like him a lot. I, uh, I just differ from him in this way. It, I, I love spring football. Uh, I, I enjoy it. I liked going to spring games as a kid. I liked going as a student. I liked watching them on TV. I liked bringing the roster to the stadium and learning about my, you know, like the, the new players. And I would pick like a favorite player when I was a kid watching these spring games. And um, I was the person, I was that football junkie that would watch the spring games from all the other schools around the SEC and kind of learn about them. And frankly, this weekend's an exception because it's the Masters. But this is a... Um, the, what else is on that, that can beat college football? I enjoyed the scrimmage in the spring game and watching and learning about a team that way. I am sad to see that go. I think that while the spring game on its own is something that isn't a big deal, losing the spring game is not a big deal. It's really not. But it's one less thing that gives us fans to engage with throughout the year. Like, if the NFL got rid of OTA, it'd be fine. Nobody would really notice. But me as a fan of the Saints, I love OTA because it gives me a reason to engage with Saints football. It's not football season. So if you take spring games away, one less thing that we as fans get to engage with, uh, with, with our favorite teams or just with the sport in general. So I'm so curious if this works this weekend because if it doesn't, I don't like that. There's one fewer thing to engage with, right, with, uh, with the team that you love, the teams that I cover, or just watch because I'm a fan of the sport. So I, I really, really hope that this works. If it doesn't, I, I, would, I would be really disappointed that spring football is going away because I have loved it every spring for my entire uh, conscious life. So. It would just be one more thing being taken away from college football that you look at it on its own in isolation, not a big deal, right? Nobody really cares, but you just keep taking away other little things like the fan days. Old Mrs. Credit is coming back. Fan days, open scrimmages, open practices, green game, stuff like that. If you just keep taking and taking and taking, eventually it's going to start piling up point where I think people could lose their emotion. So um, there's a lot, I think, of pressure in a, in a very, pressure is not the right word, but I think there's a, a lot of um, interest and intrigue into what Ole Miss is trying to do this weekend, and I hope it works. I really hope it works because I do like spring football. It's just something that, like I, I mentioned Neil earlier, I, I, I differ from, I love I think his position is mostly coming from like how coaches might possibly care about it. And seeing what Ole Miss is doing certainly justifies his position on that because clearly Lane Kiffin could not possibly care less about the football. But I am sad to see it possibly go away unless it gets replaced with something interesting like the Pro Bowl in the NFL. And finally, before we get to your comments, I have on the lead that says no more victory. Because while the overwhelming majority of the fan base, from my vantage point, was really, really um, disappointed is not even the, the right word, frankly, when it comes to this weekend in baseball. They are, are fed up. They're, they're done. And 
at large anyway. They're pretty fed up. Although I say that in the Saturday game, the Mississippi State series is sold out. But I did see some reaction. I don't know how many people actually uh, were engaging in this kind of dialogue. But I did see a lot of, I mean, yeah, they lost and they got swept, but, you know, they played well. You know, that they, they played better. They looked good. Stuff like that. And when I see that and when I hear that, I can't help but think of where Ole Miss baseball used to be, right? Because a lot of what happened this weekend is being excused. And, well, Arkansas is really good. That's a really tough place to play. And, well, hey, you know, I know they got beat, but they looked good. Right? They looked good doing it. Um, Ole Miss is supposed to be a program that when they sweep you, if you play them close, you're happy about it. Ole Miss is supposed to be what Arkansas is. Ole Miss is supposed to be when you go to Swayze Field in Oxford, you hope that you go home with, with just one. Um, oh, no, I'm having microphone issues. Check, check, check. You guys got me now? Uh, I, I hope that it's – gosh, dang it. Uh, let me try something here. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll see. Gosh, this is just not going well. Uh, I can step away for a few days and look at what happens. But anyway, hopefully you guys can hear this. It's supposed to be that team where when you go to Oxford, when you go to Ole Miss, you're lucky to get one. You are definitely not supposed to be the program that takes a moral victory away from getting swept. That should never, ever, ever be associated with Ole Miss baseball, really in any way. Definitely not after seven figures plus was spent assembling this roster. And definitely not when, when you've got a, a coaching salary pool that is in the, the top of the country, a, a program investment, both fans and in the department investment into baseball should never look at a series sweep as well they played well. And I don't know how many people actually feel that way, and I shouldn't tell fans how to feel. It's not my position, really. It, I'm just supposed to tell you you know, my opinion on things, and you guys can take it or leave it. But if anybody's like, yeah, they played well, though, that, that mentality is a cancer on a program that, spends more than almost every other program in the United States of America. That is a cancer on a fan base that cares more about baseball than 99.9% of America at the collegiate level. There is nothing good about what happened this weekend uh, in Fayetteville. Nothing good uh, about getting swept. There's nothing positive to take away uh, playing the way they have two weekends in a row, seven consecutive conference losses. There is absolutely Nothing good to take away from what happened this weekend for Ole Miss baseball. The math isn't mathing right now. It's it's not checking out. Their path to making the postseason is really, really slim. And the the, the fact that they're at this point yet again is should be looked at as an embarrassment. Not, well, you know, we went to Arkansas and played okay, but you know, we played well, but we got beat three times. That is not what Ole Miss baseball is supposed to be. It's not what it should be. And that's not what the money says that it is. So, anyway, we'll get to your comments now, and hopefully the stream will stop um, being a disaster after I tell you that the podcast is brought to you by Advantage Business Systems. Check them out online, absms.com. If your Mississippi business is in the market, for office technology, anything from copiers and printers and mail machines to cloud storage, data security, IT projects, phone systems, whatever it is. If it's technology, if it's in the office and your Mississippi business needs it, check them out online at absms.com. Tell them I sent you. You'll get a complimentary office technology assessment. So you tell them what you need and what your budget is, and they will find a solution for you on me at Advantage Business Systems. 
podcast is also brought to you by Priority One Bank. Let them make you their education here in Mississippi. So there's very likely to be one in your backyard. So uh, bank with me at Priority One Bank. They make you their priority with local loan servicing and decision making. So uh, it, it's not a situation where you have to hop on Zoom or talk to somebody from out of state. It is just simply uh, somebody that you sit down with face to face and get to know because Priority One Bank makes you their priority. So we'll get to your comments and we'll we'll get on out of here. Here's the first one. Joey Chestnut visiting is something Lane really would do. Can't wait for the eat and the sip shirts to come out. That's actually a great idea. That's a great idea. So uh, I guess we don't really have details on exactly what Joey Chestnut is going to be doing at Ole Miss, right? We're not totally sure. Obviously, uh, he's going to eat something, right? Uh, so is it going to be like a hot dog eating contest against a bunch of frat dudes? Because that would be hilarious. Um, I don't know. I, I But I am very curious to see what that looks like. That's a, real, that's a really funny thing that, that they're doing. Um, I mean, Joey Chestnut showing up to the Ole Miss spring game. What the hell? You know? Uh, only Kiffin's program. Florida baseball is getting blitzed by Florida State. through four innings for Florida State. 17-3. Wow. Yeah, and they got... Missouri swept them this weekend. What a weird situation there uh, with Florida baseball right now. They're unraveling. So, starting with Beard, big win for Ole Miss. I think they managed to keep him before Arkansas went big game hunting for Calipari. Did they go big game hunting or did they go desperate? I, I can't get past that word, desperation. I, I don't think that – Okay, and again, I read all the columns about it. I, I read the Kentucky – I've ever read the Arkansas perspective. Arkansas fans getting in my mentions. They are really excited about John Calipari. But, and, you know, sometimes people just need changes of scenery. But look at what Kentucky basketball has been for the last five years. Um, look at what they've been. Why do you think that at Arkansas it will be different? I'm not saying Arkansas is a bad program. They're obviously putting a lot of resources into basketball. Um, and like you say, abandoning football, basically. That's what it feels like with retaining Sam Pittman and, and doing what they're doing NIL-wise in basketball. They, they've just decided that they're going to punt football until they can make a change there. But, uh, I mean, what a disaster that department uh, appears to be at the moment. Which is weird to say because they just hired Kentucky's coach and they're number one in baseball. But it feels like everything's just kind of a – a mess with emotions and, and feelings pulling a bunch of people in different directions. But Arkansas is a good basketball program. They've got a lot of resources. They've, they've got a lot going for them. But what does Arkansas have that Kentucky doesn't? What, 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 did John, what, what did Coach Cal want for at Kentucky? The number one recruiting class coming in again. So recruiting player acquisition in this era, not an issue. Talent, not an issue. Hadn't adapted. Oh, but he's going to at Arkansas. Why? How do you know? You just gave him an insane amount of money. You rewarded him after years of mediocre, uh, mediocre results. Glad they kept Beard, but let's be honest, Beard owes Keith Carter big time. Leaving after one year would have been a slap in the face. I, I had a take ready to go had he made the decision to, to leave, but I don't have to. I don't have to have that take anymore because he turned down Arkansas. I mean, uh, the, that speaks to both Ole Miss and Arkansas also. But the fact is, as we talk about on here so often, the Landscape has changed, and a lot of people have not caught up with that fact yet because Ole Miss basketball and its history of nothing success-wise was able to do enough to keep their basketball coach from going to Arkansas. If you say that 10 years ago, people would have told you were nuts. Today, it's just what happens. That's college sports today. As I said on Twitter, it bears repeating. It speaks to Ole Miss and, and the investment and program status. The way people are going to look at Ole Miss basketball is going to change because of what 
Football is cool, not like a scrimmage matters anyway. Let's have fun and see Joey Chestnut eat hot dogs. You know, honestly, Lane would have had a boring, very basic blank calling day if it was a scrimmage. Last year was fun, though. Might as well have some fun instead of watching what the Pro Bowl had become as a game. Drove by Coach Cal's house here in Lexington. There was a big thank you, Coach Cal, sign in his front yard. Yeah, we saw that when we were uh, when we were driving back, and we wondered whether or not, like, what the percentage chance is that, like, a friend of his or, like, somebody that lives in that house paid for that to be outside of the house. And we landed on a number greater than 0%. Howdy, Howdy from Pascagoula. Glad to see you, Jerry. Appreciate you being here. If you're a Muscleman, you feel somewhat disrespected by what Arkansas has done. He never got the full arsenal of resources there, which is amazing when you go to two Elite Eights and a Sweet 16 in three consecutive years. I, I think that what has gone on there is also chilling on themselves a, a little bit. I mean, the, the the illusion of, even if it's not true, but the illusion of withholding resources from Eric Musselman, who took you to two Elite Eights in a Sweet 16, in three in three years, if you're not like Cal, who was desperate to get out of Kentucky, and everybody in Kentucky was desperate to get him out, maybe there's a reason Chris Beard and Jerome Tang told you no, right? Maybe there's a reason they told you no. Look in the mirror. Instead, they're not looking in the mirror. They're looking at this tiny, very old, um, dated toy that you know decade ago was the the hottest toy on the market coach cal's like a game game boys are pretty cool people still like them but now we have virtual reality helmets you know nobody's playing a game boy anymore they're good with no scrimmage it's all bs anyway you heard from some state that Beard missed out on some transfer recruits due to the Arkansas job conflict. You have no idea how true that is whatsoever. Uh, I don't think that that's that, – I mean, it's, I, I guess it's possible. But I mean, they were lining up visits right before that happened, and none of those visits have happened yet. So, no, I think they're going to be fine. Dylan Alfred, wide receiver, commits to Ole Miss. Saw that. Saw that. Good pickup. Number one uh, wide receiver in the state of Alabama. Had a bunch of big offers. Uh, so, second. All right, that's the second. Uh, 25 here. Uh, in a week's time. Both of which are high-quality prospects. With as many black jerseys, we don't need scrimmages. Have fun. Yeah, that's true. A lot of guys banged up right now. Some off-season procedures. You know, Juice Wells, uh, the the incoming Diego Pounds, the left tackle, Michael Pettis, Jackson Dart. A lot of people had to get uh, cleaned up. So, yeah. Ole Miss baseball is a weekend away from being dead. You'll be surprised if State doesn't sweep. The Mike Bianco discussion is getting uncomfortable to talk about. They are horrible. Lose two this weekend and, and wait and see what the energy uh, around the program is going to be like. Speaking of beating those guys, just getting back from Rebel Road Trip tonight. Awesome. I thought they canceled it tonight because of the weather. We got really bad weather. I guess not. But, uh, yeah. I, those are really cool, too. Frankly, I think they need to double the amount of stops on, but nobody asks me. Thanks for not criticizing Kiffin. I will when he does something worth criticism for, but I, I mean, th this is what I, I brought this up on the radio show the other day because, again, Adad and Richard call me the negative one, and it's, well, maybe it's, I, I'm just the honest one, but I didn't want to hear that. I'm kidding kind of not kidding at the same point. But I've tried to look for warts with the old Miss football program. I've tried. Right now, where are they? It, it, everything is firing with Ole Miss football on all cylinders right now. Kiff is pulling all the right strings. The staff is really good. They're recruiting well. The player retention's good. They're saying and doing all the right things. 
what is there to create? Find me something to criticize, and I will. It's just it doesn't exist, right? It's just not there. Spring game doesn't bother you as much as the way the portal and signing period the rest of the offseason. I agree with that. For sure. Our transfers don't have to sign uh, national letters of intent like high school players. Blows your mind. They are working on that. Um, I, I don't know if legally they can do it, but yeah, I think there should be at least one year contracts. But the problem is to write the contract. Even it anyway, but yes, I agree. Need to monetize the curtains as merch. I need to monetize everything I'm doing with a coffee partner. That's what I really want. The, the, the amount of money I spend on coffee in a week is nuts. That, that's my thing. And I don't go out and get it at stores, I just drink so much at home that it adds up quickly. Appreciate the super chat, Pat. Thank you, and and hopefully those mic issues did uh, did get fixed. So, but thank you for the super chat, my friend. Appreciate it. Forky goes from journalisming to fighting cats to fixing the internet like a champ. Yeah, I'm a multi skilled. Um, I'm a connoisseur of all things, except for hitting the uh, the driver. That's something that I can't do anymore. I guess. Embarrassment. Had good, kind of good, decent uh, iron game and, and around the greens was fine. Couldn't hit it off the tee. It sucked. Women's baseball is a complete embarrassment. There's no way to fix it. It is what it is now. Lose this weekend, it is. I think we're all scratching our heads after all these years of postseason play. You think Arkansas is desperate? That's the word. I'm, I mean, I, I think going after Cal, who Kentucky wanted to fire, but because they gave him a stupid contract, they couldn't. Um, they had to go, quote, big game hunting because they were desperate after getting very publicly denied the way they did. Bo says if Ole Miss drops the series to state, dot, dot, dot. And then the next reply was, you know as well as I do what's coming this weekend. We can only hope state has some players serving suspensions from the weirdest review ejections ever. I don't think they will, right? Or, or maybe just one. That whole situation was an absolute cluster. You know what? I mean, just a disaster on, on every level. Uh, the SEC should be embarrassed about how that went. Um, Sounds like Zach Selman got a, a lot of that alleviated, but the fact that that happened might be in real time and the replay in Birmingham is really, you know, who did it? It wasn't the umps on the field necessarily. It was apparently all replay and delaying a game for, you know, three quarters of an hour is just insane uh, for what happened. Very stupid. And I also have turned Ole baseball into a juggernaut. Is the money just not there or are they misevaluating? I mean, I don't know what other programs in the SEC are spending in baseball. But I do know that there are almost no programs spending over a million dollars on their baseball roster. Now, everybody that is exists in the SEC, probably. But money's there. The, the money's there. So far, to uh, appears to be misevaluation. I, I, among other things. Because it's not a monetary issue. You don't think the coaching staff are good evaluators and they need a pitching coach? The talent on the roster has decreased. Two of the three of the weekend starters are out. That That certainly is hurting this team for sure. 100%. That is a factor when you talk about this team Losing two of the three weekend starters, although they knew Hunter Elliott wasn't going to be available. So that's only like a halfway thing. And then JT Quinn gets hurt on top of it all. But the guys that they were going to rely on in some role on weekends have not improved at all. And that's not the only thing wrong with this team. If they just couldn't pitch it, if they just couldn't pitch it and everything else was good, there would be an excuse that we would have to talk about. But they do everything for 
because they do everything poorly, because they're so inconsistent, because sometimes like the South Carolina series, for example, they look good. But because of the lack of consistency, the, the ability to commit very simple errors being as bad as they are, um, with runners on base, situational baseball being as bad as it is, it's, it's all bad. And when it's all bad, you can't just blame pitching injuries. Yeah, even still, that doesn't excuse being embarrassed every week. Yeah. What's the reality that Jans could have gotten the Arkansas job? I don't know. Frankly, I, I, I wish I could tell you more. I, I have no idea uh, what went down there. So I, I don't want to you know speculate on it. Um, I don't know. And so I'll, I'll have to I'll have to ask Haydad and a couple other people tomorrow when I when I start working again to to see you know kind of what what happened because I don't know I don't know if he was offered and he turned it down too or they went they wanted to interview him and then things got weird and so they had to go get Cal but I did see a lot of Arkansas fans when when James was getting floated out there they were like please no please no please no it's like. Yeah, please don't hire an objectively great basketball coach who recruits well and makes the tournament. Please don't hire that guy. The arrogance of some fan bases is unbelievable. It really is. Oh, Barbara, we're, uh, I am not going to get into the coach replacement thing at the moment until that conversation becomes a reality. Now I know you're frustrated and, and all that, but I'm not going to start talking about replacements until uh, termination becomes realistic. So um, there are people that I have in mind that I think would do an excellent job at Ole Miss. But we'll do that another day. When the championship without Elko, they have no Elko. I agree with that. They technically postponed it, okay, but they still used to want their calls. Weather won't get bad in Hattiesburg until late tonight. Yeah, I, I guess tomorrow is going to be a, a pretty pretty tough day. But I mean, the sirens went off here a little while ago, so I'm kind of wondering if I need to hang up and go put on the news. Would be the bomb if Austin Simmons beat out Jackson North for quarterback one. I don't think that that's something that you want to happen, frankly. Jackson Dart put this team together on his own. He, he's the quarterback. Of the team. I think there would be a mutiny if Jackson Dart had his starting spot taken away from him. It's damning when the worst position on a Mike Bianco team is catcher. I know it. That's the weirdest part about this team because for, for all of the stuff that people criticize Mike Bianco for over his career, catcher is never something ever that you've been able to criticize. They've always been good there. Now they're awful there. doesn't make sense. You're a state fan and loved Elko as a gamer. Yeah, if you can at least respect what he did uh, just as a player, um, he was just a ball player. And um, just tough as hell and, and good dude on top of that, you know. And I know the rivalry, right? But if you can't at least respect a guy like Tim Elko, then you can't respect anybody. We won one of the first baseball championships in the NIL era. The first. Should have carried that momentum into building. In the, no, the second, right? Because 21 was the first. State won the first one. In, in this era, post-COVID, right? Isn't that how that timing? Anyway, whatever. Should have carried that momentum into building an elite roster. There's not more, there's no more 11.7 limitations. Well, there are still that, but it's just, it's not as impactful, but. Hello, bro from LA. What's up, RZ? Glad to see you, man. Can't stay, but wanted to say you do a great job and we'll catch the show later in the week. Tour time. Peace and love. Play well tonight. Is that what you say to people in, in the music business? Do you say play well? Have a good show? Probably, right? Yeah. Anyway, have a good show out from LA, man. Appreciate you. Really appreciate you. We still have Nash, by the way. He's 
loves Nash. You can say both Ole Miss and State blew major opportunities to further their baseball programs after their natties. Yep, completely blew it. Now LSU's blowing it. You checked on Ole Miss baseball after the Saturday loss to Kentucky. Checked out on Ole Miss baseball after the Saturday loss to Kentucky. New coach, and you'll check back in. That's the sentiment of a lot of people right now. After picking up Cal, maybe Jerry Jones convinces Saban to come out of retirement after they fire Pittman. Swayze hasn't seen a winning product in the stadium since 2001. It's a long time ago. What a weird night. A&M is losing to UTSA. Florida's getting killed by Florida State. Auburn losing to Alabama State. Kentucky losing to Sanford. Clemson lost to SC Upstate. Duke lost as well. Jeez, that's baseball sometimes. 9-33 and 33 in two years, 23-49. and 49, The last three is inexcusable, no doubt. Yep, we're on the same page. Losing two pitchers is no excuse. They can't pitch, hit, or field. Does Cal to Arkansas open the door of Beard to Kentucky? Not right now. Uh, I, I do think that his his arrest, his, his past, is going to limit his opportunity at a place like Kentucky. I think that Scott Drew is probably, and I'm just kind of using gut feeling here, going to be the guy that they end up hiring. Yeah, feels like Scott Drew is the number one. UK wants Hurley, but he's not leaving UConn. He'd be a moron to leave UConn. He just had the most dominating two tournament runs in the history of the sport. Why leave that? It was right after State won the title. Okay, right after is when NIL came. My thoughts on the UFL. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. I'll watch it casually. I'm not like building my Saturday around it. But if there's nothing to do, if I got nothing to do, then I'll put it on. That's kind of where I fall. And I think that's good enough for them. That's what they need. They just need enough people. They get the football junkies. They have the few hundred thousand people that will tune in no matter what. Their ratings are okay. Seven, eight, nine hundred thousand. As long as they keep those people and and keep appealing to people like me, then then they'll survive. They've got enough backing. It's it's a fine product. It's just the time of year's tough. Speaking of El- Elko, he's catching the first pitch from Corral into Amu soon. Supposed to be an Ole Miss alum event for it in Birmingham. Catching the first pitch from Corral into Amu soon. So he's in Birmingham. Nice. UConn may be turning into a dynasty. And imagine doing that in this era. Knoxville is a hard place to play, and they got swept by the two best teams record-wise in the conference. Hopefully they can turn it around and make it respectable. Sunshine is being pumped. Hey, that, that's that's absolutely fine, man. Keep keep your optimism. I, I keep mine with, with my teams. I'm, I've convinced myself that the Saints are going to win the division in the, and go to the playoffs this year. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I don't see it that way, but so what? Keep that optimism up. I didn't see it that way in 2022. Look what happened. Hey, the sirens are going off for me again. So um, I'm going to go. So um, I appreciate you guys. I don't know what's going on, so I'm, I'm just going to, you know, be ready. So anyway, I appreciate you guys. Like the video, all that. I'm, I'm going to go. But uh, you guys are uh, you guys are the best. Thank you. Like the video, all that. I'll see you on the next one.